Well, we're in a mess, aren't we? I think what I'll do first is walk you through Chernobyl and Fukushima. I've only got about 45 minutes and then we're going to take questions and then do the nuclear war bit. So I'm going to have to move quite fast. Um, Chernobyl was a result of human failure. Um, one night there was a man who was a specialist in hydroelectricity running the Chernobyl reactor and he did a crazy experiment in the middle of the night and there was a huge bang and the control room filled up with white powder and he said to his two young men who was assisting him, go out and see what's happened. And they went out and came back and said, it's gone. And he said, what's gone? They said, the reactor's gone. He said, don't be ridiculous. Go back and have another look. <laughs> Those three men died within two weeks of acute radiation illness with their hair falling out, vomiting and bleeding to death because high radiation doses kill the actively dividing cells of the body, which are the hair cells, the gut cells, and the cells in the bone marrow that make the platelets and the white blood cells and the red blood cells. In fact, they brought in 600,000 men that they called liquidators to try and resolve that accident and, and try and prevent it getting worse. Um, they were liquidated. I don't know why they called them liquidators. Many of them have died since of cancer um, and their children are being born deformed and with diseases. Now, there's a report here by the National the New York Academy of Sciences, which you all should download, which is absolutely imperative to read. The, uh, the International Atomic Energy Agency, which controls nuclear power and supports it around the world, says that only 4,000 people died because of Chernobyl. The World Health Organization has an unholy alliance with the IAEA an agreement signed in 57 saying that WHO can't investigate any atomic accidents uh, unless the IAEA says so. So the WHO has never investigated Chernobyl, didn't investigate Three Mile Island, and it's not investigating uh, Fukushima, which is really more than medically irresponsible. So what... There's a man called Timothy Mousseau who's an evolutionary biologist at the University of South... South Carolina, I think. Um, and he has been looking at the birds and the insects and the wildlife in the exclusion zone around Chernobyl. He's found that the birds have smaller than normal brains, that the birds are exhibiting various mutations like white feathers, deformed beaks and the like. The insects are deformed um, and the species are decreasing in numbers. Now, we always extrapolate from animals to humans to work out what certain things do to human bodies. That's a very scary, um, that's very scary data that he's developing. He's also just been to Fukushima. I mean, he's really, <laughs> well, I could say brave, but I think maybe a little bit silly because he's going into the very high radiation areas. He's finding more damage to the wildlife around Fukushima than indeed Chernobyl. And it was Timothy Mc uh, Timothy uh, Musso, who got the New York Academy to translate 5,000 articles written in Russian in the peer-reviewed literature, epidemiologists, physicians and the like, into English for the first time because the IAEA had never even looked at Russian articles. They hadn't even studied the people. So this book is imperative reading and it shows that by now, 25 years post-Chernobyl, over a million people have died. 25 years post Chernobyl, over a million people have died. And that they've died of various things. There are homes full of the most severely deformed children. And what radiation does to a developing embryo in the first trimester is it can kill a cell that's going to form the left half of the brain or the right arm, like thalidomide did. And that's called teratogenesis. A genetically chromosomally normal fetus is damaged by radiation. And we have never seen in the history of paediatrics such children. And there's a photograph here of them, and, and it's really tragic. Um, there's a film called Chernobyl Heart, which documents, and you can download it on the internet, uh, what's happening to these children. 
Children are aging prematurely. They're getting diseases that old people get. There's a very high incidence of cataracts induced by radiation. Um, children are getting heart disease because cesium-137 concentrates in the heart muscle and they're dying of heart disease. Um, there's a high incidence of diabetes because cesium-137 concentrates in the endocrine glands, including the pancreas. Um, and, of course, there's a very high incidence of cancer and leukaemia. This book, it, it's, it's an absolutely tragic book to read. And the, uh, the community uh, in America, the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission and others, are ignoring it because they say, well, the Russians don't really have proper peer review, not like us. We're really stringent and they're less stringent. So we can just ignore what they've done. This is the biggest medical tragedy in the history of the human race. And it's only 25 years hence. The fact is that 40% of the European landmass is contaminated with cesium-137, which lasts for 600 years, and plutonium that lasts for half a million years, and americium-241, which is much more toxic than plutonium, and strontium-90, and I can go on and on. I do not buy European food because I don't know what's radioactive and what's not. And when you eat food, you can't say, hmm, I can taste the cesium in this Spanish olive oil. I can taste the strontium-90 in this cheese made in Sweden. Because our senses didn't evolve in an environment where we could taste, smell or see radioactive elements in our food. And interestingly, the IAEA and other international nuclear agencies only measure external radiation. They never take into account what you eat and inhale that gets into your body irradiating small volumes of cells in your thyroid to give you thyroid cancer from radioactive iodine or plutonium in your lung which radiates a tiny volume of cells. They ignore internal emitters. So the whole thing is a fabrication. And as a physician, and, a, and I'm not a radiobiologist but I understand pathology, they're lying. And, you know, in medicine, if we lied, we would be damaging or killing our patients and we would be deregistered. It is totally inappropriate to lie with science. This accident has just begun. I rang the man in Melbourne, Australia, who tests the food imported from Europe for radiation. And I said, how do you test it? He said, oh, we do random spot checks. The computer picks out certain batches, which means you miss a lot. I said, well, what do you do when you find radioactive food? Oh, he said... We dilute it with non-radioactive food. <laughs> For those biologists in the audience or physicians, you know that the solution to pollution by dilution is fallacious when it comes to radiation because it reconcentrates back in the food chain and in human bodies. So I'm very careful. I look at all the labels. Anyway, in Australia, we don't have radioactive food. We don't have nuclear reactors. It's just too dangerous for us. We just export uranium to the rest of the world. We're a really wicked nation. Um, and the, the uranium in the Fukushima reactors was our uranium and it's killing people. Uh, so I think I'll, I'll kind of stop here with Chernobyl, but to know that nuclear accidents never end, that cesium lasts for 600 years, um, that um, the reindeer in, uh, in Lapland and in the Scandinavian countries are radioactive because the lichen concentrates radiation. There are wild boar running around Germany so radioactive they almost glow in the dark. And when people kill them, they have to be buried in radioactive waste dumps. There are over 300 farms in Wales and Cumbria uh, where the farmers can't grow their lambs anymore because they're full of cesium, they're radioactive. So the government went to them and said, you've got to close your farm down. And the farmer said, well, for how long? And they said, well, about 100 years. It's not, it's 600 if you're only looking at cesium, but that's only one of about 100 isotopes that escape from reactors, many of which have not been looked at from a biological perspective. You all know that radioactive iodine causes thyroid cancer. You all know that strontium-90 is a calcium analogue and goes to bone where it can cause bone cancer or leukaemia. You all know that cesium-137 is a potassium analogue, which all cells are rich in potassium, so it can cause brain tumours very rare muscle tumours called rhabdomyosarcomas. It can concentrate in the testicles and ovaries where it can cause cancers in those organs and mutate the genes in the sperm and eggs to affect all future generations. And we all carry several hundred genes for disease. 
We don't know we carry them unless we mate with someone with a similar uh, gene to have a baby with cystic fibrosis or diabetes. And there are now 2,600 such diseases described. And I'll tell you a personal anecdote. My, I've been going around the world for 40 years talking about this. We all carry several hundred genes and you know, everyone says, yeah. Well, my son, my oldest son, Philip, who I adore, has just been diagnosed with hemochromatosis. Now, what is that? It's an abnormality in iron metabolism whereby you can't excrete iron. So you build up iron stores, very high levels, and the iron deposits in the cardiac muscle so you can get cardiac abnormalities and the liver where you can get cirrhosis and the like. Fortunately, I think he was picked up early enough and he has to be bled every week. But I carry the gene. And so does my ex-husband. So, I mean, this is so for all of us, but what we're going to do by increasing radiation in the environment for the rest of time with radioactive waste and meltdowns and waste from bomb production is increase the incidence of genetic disease damaging the very building blocks of life, not just in humans, but 30 million other species which all have genes. Random compulsory genetic engineering for the rest of time. Okay, now Fukushima. <laughs> Well, the Japanese built six reactors on an earthquake fault. Well, the Americans built two reactors here on an earthquake fault and two down south. Is it, did I come north today yet? Two down south at San Onofre on an earthquake fault. Oh, my God. How stupid. Human fallibility. That's what we're dealing with. We have a technology now with which we have to be infallible. Hands up those who think they're infallible. What about when you have a fight with your wife? What about when you get the flu and you feel really lousy and you make stupid mistakes, you know? What about when your kid's being difficult? <sighs> Even when we're normal and feel good, we're still fallible. So we've got a problem. So what happened at Fukushima is, yeah, they built six reactors on an earthquake fault and there are more down south, Fukushima Daini, which is also built on an earthquake fault. And they had an earthquake and they had a tsunami. Now, when they had the earthquake, they lost the external power supply, which supplies the power to circulate one million gallons of cooling water a minute to each of those six reactors. You have to have that, otherwise the uranium fuel melts. It's so terribly hot, full of fission products, which are thermally and radioactively hot. So underneath the reactors, they have huge diesel generators about half the size of this room run with diesel. But the problem is, just after the, the uh, earthquake, in came the tsunami, which drowned the diesel generators. So they had no cooling. And within 48 hours, the three reactors had melted down. And as they melted, hydrogen was released, and I won't go into the chemistry of it, and there were four hydrogen explosions which blew the bejesus out of the top of the containment vessels and huge amounts of radiation escaped. You know, the Japanese government didn't tell the people there'd been three meltdowns for three months afterwards. They didn't tell the people where the radiation plume was going so people fled into the radiation plume because they didn't want to, quotes create panic. That's what your government would do. Your government is as irresponsible as the Japanese government and in the thrall of the nuclear industry as is the Japanese government. TEPCO run them, Tokyo Electric Power Company and the NRC, which is paid for by the nuclear industry, runs your government. Your government's full of corporate prostitutes, let's be frank. <laughs> and... and, and and it's full of corporate prostitutes because you leave a vacuum.